In this video, we discuss limits and colimits, one of the most important concepts in category theory. If we are given categories i and a, there is a diagonal functor, delta, from the category a to the category of functors from category i to category a, which takes an object x in a to the constant functor, delta x, which in turn takes every i object to x and every i morphism to the identity on x. And delta takes an amorphism f to the natural transformation, which has components equal to f. So if we are given a functor d from i to a, we will also call this functor a diagram in a. The category of cones on d, respectively co-cones on d, is defined to be the over category delta over d, respectively d over delta, where d, as an object in the category of functors from i to a, is viewed as a functor from the terminal category to the functor category. Then an object in this category is called a cone on D and it is a natural transformation delta x to D for some A object x. This means for each I morphism D, there is a commuting square. But since the constant functor on x takes everything to the identity on x, this is equivalent to a commuting triangle for each I morphism D. Visually, we have a cone on D as an object X along with A morphisms, PI for each I object I, which is compatible with the I structure. And this is where the terminology cone comes from. We can then write a cone as a collection indexed by the objects of I of A morphisms from X to DI with the naturality condition left implicit. And a morphism of cones then is a morphism in the over category but since the terminal category has only one identity morphism, a morphism of cones from xp to x prime q is given by an amorphism f, such that the triangle of natural transformations commutes. And we recall that delta f is a natural transformations with components equal to f. So then visually, we have a morphism of cones as a stack of two cones, where the top cone is a domain cone, and the bottom cone is the codomain with the vertices being connected by that amorphism f. And naturality ensures that for each i, qi f is equal to pi. We can then define the limit of d, denoted lim subscript i d, respectively colimit of d, denoted colim subscript i d, to be the terminal object in the category of cones on d, respectively the initial object in the category of co-cones on d. Visually, the limit is a terminal cone, and so for any other cone, there is a unique factorization of this cone through the limit cone. We will sometimes denote the limit, respectively co-limit, as the collection of amorphisms defining the natural transformation. And context will usually tell us if we mean the object defining the limit, respectively co-limit, or the limiting cone, respectively co-limiting co-cone. Finally, we say that functor f from a category A to a category B preserves a limit, respectively co-limit, of D if and only if the induced functor of cones, respectively co-cones, preserves the terminal object, respectively initial object. This means that the functor takes the limit cone of D in the category A to the limit cone of FD in the category B, and similarly for the co-limit case. 